For all the latest on the Saw Guy podcast, be sure to subscribe and don't forget that bell icon. Welcome to the Saw Guy podcast. As always, y'all know, I am the Saw Guy, and it's still this wonderful time of the year, right? We all know what time it is. <laughs> but you know what? I don't say it's still love in the air. Fuck that noise. It's still about the horror in the year, right? And you're joining me for episode 45 on the cult classic, Valentine. So without further ado, let's get this show started. Hello, and welcome to the Saw Guy podcast. <laughs> I'm just gonna bash your brains. What the hell? The boogeyman is real, and you found him. What do you want? I want to hear you scream. Hell, everybody loves popcorn. Valentine is a cult favorite for many different reasons. You know, you either had the people that really love this film, or they really hated this film. And it's one of those things where <laughs> it kind of blows my mind at this little tidbit, right? This movie, Valentine, was based off the same novel called Valentine by Tom Savage. Like, mind blown, right? <laughs> I mean, it still blows my mind on that, you know? And for the sake of this episode, what I decided to do, I decided I order the book and I actually cram that book to finish it within a week for you guys, you know, to make sure that I know the difference between the book and the movie and everything like that. And um, they're very similar. They very are similar, you know, and there's hardly little differences here and there. But, you know, before we get started on this episode, I'll break everything down for you guys and, you know, tell you the story and everything, throw in little tidbits like I always do. And let's get this show started, right? <laughs> so Valentine's. This film starts off, you know, you see the credits and then you see this yearbook. It said class of 1988. <laughs> you know, classic 80 babies, you know, we'll remember that shit, you know. Um, and as he, he, it shows, it this yearbook is opening up, right? And it shows how, you know, there's hearts on some girls and then they put an X over it and shit and they'll say, I hate you and this. And it follows this geeky looking kid. His name's Jeremy Melton. And he's asking all these young girls, you know, the cute ones in there. At, I guess it's a middle school dance. And he's like, hey, um, um, do, 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 do you want to dance with me? <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, they're looking at it. They're like, uh, no. <laughs> I'd laugh at that shit because, you know, um, you can't make movies like that anymore. I mean, everybody would either get offended or get pissed off. But if you live that like I did, you know, I was one of those geeky kids. I was like that. Like, do you, do you want to dance? They look at you like, no. <laughs> but shows off that whole thing, right? So he's asking all these different girls. You know, each girl says, ew. Another one says, well, I'd rather be boiled alive. Another one's like, in your dreams, you know, because they had to follow the stereotype of 80s catchphrase, you know. <laughs> and um, he finally gets to this one girl and she goes, well, maybe. And maybe then he's like, oh, okay. Uh -oh, okay. I'll come back, you know. Then he's, <laughs> and then this is what this kid does. He goes to another girl and he says, hey, do you want to dance? And uh, he's talking to this girl with bleachers, right? And she's sitting there and you can tell that she's one of those girls that doesn't fit in. She's not one of the cute ones or anything. And then it shows that they start holding hands, being all cute. And then they go behind the bleachers of their gym and they start making out, right? And then you see all these bully kids that come up. They're like, ew, look at that, pervert. That's what they call Jeremy Melton. They call him the pervert. They said, ew, pervert's making out with Buffalo. And Buffalo was meant for the big girl that he was making out. Her name was Dorothy. And I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> you can't say this shit no more in modern movies now these days. It's crazy, you know? But anyways... Um, she didn't want to look like she was making out with that guy, so she's like, no, get off of me. He attacked me. He attacked me. And then they showed that the bullies are like, pervert attack Buffalo. Let's get him. So they basically go after Jeremy Melton, and they're pulling his clothes off, and he's butt-ass naked, like in his underwear. It's his underoos, I guess. And they start kicking the shit out of him. And then the film just starts, right? <laughs> Um, I thought it was kind of an interesting take on it because the book is very similar to that. It, it doesn't describe it word for word or the scene, but it builds up the anticipation on that, right? And so the movie kicks off. You see one of the girls. Her name was Shelly. She's on a date with this guy. His name is Jason Marquette. He's one of those rich, stuck-up kind of guys, and, you know, he's Mr. Perfect, I guess, right? So he's talking to her, and I guess they're on a date, and then he's like, well, Jason over here, he uh, thinks that you'd be a perfect candidate to, uh, you know, breed 
different kids or to be my wife and you know stupid shit like that like he was very he talked to himself in uh third person i guess you know it was very weird and she was just like uh and <laughs> you know as he's saying all that he's got this big ass piece of spinach stuck in his teeth and then she's like well jason has some spinach stuck in his teeth and he's like oh right he pulls it out and he fucking eats it in front of her i was like dude that's disgusting as hell man that's rule number one on the date you never fucking have shit in your teeth. <laughs> you always got to make sure your teeth is brushed at least. I mean, come on now, right? So anyways, as they're talking, you know, he starts to tell her, so what do you think? And she's like, um, I got stuff to do for school because she was going to school to become a doctor, right? And he's like, oh, well, too bad. So she basically says, check, and they get the check. And then, you know, instead of him being the gentleman, he ended up pulling the douchey thing of like, well, oh, this is expensive. So um, I only had the chicken and the salad. You had this, you had that. She's like, right. Pulls out her purse. She pays her half and shit. And then as she's leaving, he's basically like, well, don't I get a kiss? It's Valentine's coming up, you know? And she's like, oh, no. <laughs> she goes, if anything, you need psychiatric help. I'm not a doctor yet, but you need the help, like, quick. <laughs> so she walks away, and then he's still there. He turns around, and he sees this other chick, and then he's like, hey. Jason likes your dress. <laughs> I thought it was kind of creepy, you know, but I thought it was cool because they use the name Jason. It's a wink towards Jason Voorhees. Um, most horror movies, they do, do that or they used to do that. Some still do. I mean, it's hit and miss, right? So it follows Shelly. She goes into her medical lab and I thought this was fucking weird because I went to medical school. Um, they had her do it like in the middle of the fucking night <laughs> where it's the day before her test and she has to dissect her, her uh, cadaver. She's called it a corpse, and, you know, <laughs> I'm going to kind of nerd out a little bit on some of these things, like, that's not a corpse, it's a cadaver, come on, get it right, you know? <laughs> but anyways, it shows that she gets there, she hears a noise, she sees some other kid, he's walking out, and he's like, you going to be okay? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm just going to go work on my corpse, and she didn't say cadaver, like I said. So she goes back there, she pulls out the scalpel, and she's going to make the incision, and what I thought was funny, she's like, oh, I'm going to do a transverse cut. Transverse means left to right, right? But as she's cutting, it's going from top to bottom. That's called a sagittal midline cut. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god, they botched the fuck out of this. Um, as that's happening, you know, she sees the stomach move. And then she starts hearing noises. She turns, comes back, and then all of a sudden the body's gone. And she's like, what the fuck? And then all of a sudden, um, she sees this guy who's, you know, coming after her. And he's dressed in this Cupid mask. They call it a Sherem mask. Um, they don't call it Cupid. I know, I, I've always called it Cupid. I... To me, it's Cupid, right? <laughs> so anyways, you know, she sees him. He's coming after her. She's trying to run and shit. She take, she knocks him out, and then she's running down the hallway. She goes in a room, and she ends up screwing herself over because they're all, like, dead bodies in bags, right? So she thought, okay, I'm going to hide. So she runs inside the body bag, zips it up, and he sees that she's not in there, but he sees all these body bags. So the first two he opens up. Then after that, he gets irritated, so he starts stabbing all of them and shit. And then finally, he sees this one bag move a little bit. He unzips it. Then as she's lying down, he grabs her up and then just whoosh, slits her throat like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, you don't expect, like, the first five minutes of it going from, like, bullying the kid to the fucked up date. And then, like, boom, now you're dead. <laughs> and what I thought was crazy, that actor who played Shelly, her name was Katherine Heigl. And she was the one who basically got famous because we all know her from The Bride of Chucky. She was the main girl on that. And uh, she was only in this film, like, five minutes. But, I mean, it kind of boosted up her career a little bit, you know. Uh, later on, she regretted doing the role. I don't know why. I mean, you know, you got your start in horror films, lady. Come on now. <laughs> but anyways, in the next scene, they showed that, uh, it shows the two other girls that basically, you know, blew off Jeremy Melton. Well, it was the first one page where she's like, ew, I'd rather be boiled alive. And then it shows Marley Shelton's character, and she plays a character named Kate. She was the one who said maybe, and he's the one that he kind of fell in love with, you know? It shows them there, because the whole town is based out of San Francisco. And, you know, <laughs> they're on the pier and they're like, okay, let's go try the speed dating thing, right? And I thought this was kind of funny because I'm a California boy, right? They go in there and they do the speed dating thing because they have 30 seconds with each guy and they could talk to him and stuff. What I thought was funny, they showed like different scenes where she's like talking to a guy and then he's like, the Bible, you know? And that didn't work out, obviously, because he seemed kind of loopy, right? Then it showed another football fan guy where he's like, the best team on the world is the San Francisco 49ers. Whoa! And I was just like, oh my God, dude. You had to throw in the 49ers. <laughs> and then, um, you know, they see this other guy. His name's Brian. And he's over there trying to talk to her. And she's kind of liking it a little bit, right? 
And then that's when her friend Paige pulls over and says, well, she's taken, but I could talk to you. So it kind of builds up the anticipation, builds up character development, because you will see him later, right? After everything's all done, they're laughing, talking shit about it. Then they get a phone call from Dorothy. Dorothy was the big girl who said that Jeremy Milton had attacked her. And they're all friends and everything like that. She called her up and said, hey, you know, Shelly was killed and there's the funeral. And then that's when the next scene it shows. It shows the funeral scene where it shows all the girls there, including Lily, one of the first girls that had turned him down. And, um, you know, they were like, this is all fucked up. You know, there's, I can't believe that she's gone, you know. And as they're walking, then you see Kate. She goes and meets up with her boyfriend. He's basically an on and off kind of boyfriend. And you find out that he's kind of like a closet drunk. You know, he drinks a lot, right? He, his name is Adam Card, and he's played by David Baranis, which most people know him from Bones, uh, Angel, you know, a bunch of other TV shows, because he's a big-time TV star, you know? And, you know, they show that they're talking and everything. He wants to try to get her back, and she's like, well, you know, we'll see, and, you know, he drives off and everything, and then they all start talking. And then they meet the detective. The detective says, hey, have you talked to Shelly? They're like, well, not in a while. She's been busy with med school, right? And then they, you know, break it down and said, okay, well, if you hear anything, let me know. I'm looking for a guy named Jason, you know, Marquette. That was the guy that she had the date with, right? And so later on, it, it goes into the story of all the different aspects of them, you know? So you find out a little bit more of them. With Dorothy, the one who said that she was attacked, she's kind of like the rich girl. And, you know, it shows that she comes home in this fancy, nice house, right? And she sees her dad. And he has a young wife who's probably younger than her because they implied it later on. And, uh, you know, she sees that they have a maid and everything. And then, you know, she's just she sees that she gets this weird Valentine card. Right. She reads it and it says something that, you know, roses are red, violets are blue. They'll need your teeth to identify you or something like that. Right. And then she starts to, like, get creeped out. And she hears a knock on this door. And it's this guy that she had met from her exclusive yoga class. Right. And he's like, well, I need a place to stay. I need some money. I'm trying to start up this business. And, you know, my roommate kicked me out. Da, 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 da. She's like, oh, don't worry. Just go ahead and stay. And the maid's like, are you sure your dad said that's okay with it? <laughs> um, you know, there's a little bit of dialogue here and there. And then, you know, her and the stepmom kind of get into it because the stepmom's younger than her. And she's making fun of her like, oh, you know, that's why you're on the treadmill all the time. So you could be looking good for that guy. And they start bickering. And she called her a mail order bride from hell. <laughs> like it was very cheesy. It was supposed to be cheesy because it's a wink to all the teen slasher films from the 80s, right? And as that's going on, then you find out little bits of other people, other people. You find out little bits of, like, the other girls of what's going on in their life, you know? Like, Marla Shelton's character, Kate. You know, she works, you know, as, I guess you could say, as a newspaper writer. It shows that she's in the shower and everything, getting ready. Then her water, you know, shuts off and she hears a noise. Then, you know, she tries to call the supervisor, or I guess you could say the superintendent, you know, the guys that come in and fix the shit in your apartments and stuff. And, you know, the water was out, so she's like, ah, oh, fuck. So she goes in, and it shows that she dips her hair in the fucking toilet. <laughs> you know, rinse it out. I mean, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do if you're running late, right? <laughs> um, and then she hears this noise, and then she goes outside, you know, to her, her front part of her uh, apartment. She sees the doors open. So she goes out there, and then she hears this elevator keeps dinging. Ding, ding, ding. And then all of a sudden she looks down and it's the fucking sheriff mask. It's weird, right? Then she sees her neighbor and he's like, hey, Kate, uh, you want to be my mate? Hi, Gary. You could be my date. You know, he was a fucking weirdo. He, he was her neighbor. And she's like, uh, no. <laughs> um, and then later on, it shows, you know, it shows, uh, what's her name? Denise Richards' character. Her name is Paige. And then it shows the other character. Her name is Lily, who's actually played by Jessica Caffell. I guess you could say I, I might have botched that. Sorry. <laughs> but um, Lily and Paige, you know, I guess they live together. And, you know, they're hanging out at their apartment and stuff, and then they hear this knock on the door. They see that it's a box of, you know, heart chocolates. They see that, you know, there's a note on there, and it said, you know, sign J.M., right? She opens, and she's like, well, it's got to be you, Paige. I mean, you're the one that's covered the whole alphabet on everybody. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of cheesy 80s, like, lines in here. It was pretty cool. So she goes and gets the candy heart box, opens it up, right? She sees it's all chocolate and everything. She bites into it. It's fucking maggots! Oh! That's fucking sick, you know? And then all of a sudden, uh, it shows that uh, she's, like, spitting it out. She's like, Ugh! <laughs> It was fucking, you know, overdone, but hey, it was funny, you know? And then they're discussing, like, who's JM? They're trying to figure it out. And then they start joking. Maybe it's Jeremy Melton, the kid that we fucked with in sixth grade. No, it can't be him, right? Then it shows that they go to this art exhibit, right? <clears throat> because Lily 
her boyfriend, he's, uh, his name's Max. He's this, like, weird artist, you know? Like, his art has to involve, like, a lot of sexuality stuff, you know? Um, similar, they said it best in the film. They said it's like a bra ad or something, you know? <laughs> um, but it was pretty funny, you know, because they all go and they meet up and everything, and all the girls, they all start talking and everything about, like, hey, I got this weird thing, and, oh, shit, we were talking about Jeremy, you know? And all, all this aspect of it, right? And then as they're talking, then, you know, Max is like, okay, let's split this up. You know, guys on one side, girls on the other, you know, and enjoy your blind date. And I guess it was an art exhibit for Valentine's Day and shit. It shows that they walk through all the girls. Then Lily breaks off. She starts making out with Max. Then Max brings in this other chick. And then she's like, hey, tell that bitch to get out of here. <laughs> He's like, no, I invited her. Who's that? Oh, that's just Amy. <laughs> you know, he tried to have a little bit more fun, let's just say, right? And she's like, fuck that, you're a sleazeball. And he's like, well, you kind of knew that already. <laughs> you know, and so she gets pissed, and so she's walking around and everything like that, like trying to get out, and then all of a sudden the music starts, you know, warping out and shit, and then it stops. And then she turns around, and she sees that killer, you know, the Cupid killer or the sheriff killer, right? He's looking at her, and then he has a bow and arrow, and it hits her right in the fucking chest, and she's like freaking out. And then he does another bow, you know? <laughs> Another one, right? Goes right through her, and the second one. And then she hits the emergency exit, like, leaning out on the fucking rail. And then he pulls it back, and then it shows his nose is bleeding. And then that's the third shot that hits her. She falls all the way down in the center. Whack! Right until the fucking uh, trash can, and then it closes shut. I was like, oh, shit, this is a pretty cool kill. <laughs> I mean, you kind of expect that, you know, when, it, when they fall in the middle and there's a trash can. I mean, it kind of builds up to it, right? So he's already killed two people, right? Then after that, then they start talking about, like, the different aspects of their life. You know, they're starting to talk to the detective. And the detective's like, hey, weren't there three of you? You know? And they're like, well, the other one, she's out of town. She's in L.A. Because she had to leave to L.A., right? And they start talking about, like, the case. You know, of who would go and kill Shelly? Who would go and do this and that, right? And then they start talking about Jeremy Melton. And then that's when Dorothy admits, well, he didn't attack me. I just made that up because I didn't want to get fucked with. And the girls are like, what? You know? And then you find out what happened to Jeremy, right? After everything had all happened, you know, the detective Vaughn, he went through and did research and he said, well, after he got kicked out of the school, he went to reform school. Then he went to, you know, juvenile hall. Then he went to a mental institution. And now he's gone, you know? <laughs> they have no picture of him. So they're showing like different pictures of what he could look like, you know, without plastic surgery. And all the girls are like, uh-uh, doesn't ring a bell, Ken. I've never seen that. And, then, you know, that was funny. Kate's like, um, do you have a more recent picture of him? That he looks at her like, bitch, what? <laughs> if we had another, a newer picture, wouldn't we be looking at that? <laughs> you know, there's so many little different tidbits that I thought was kind of funny with it, you know? Because they'll never make a horror film exactly like this, which is why I call it a cult favorite, you know? It's a cult favorite of mine because, you know, obviously I saw that shit in high school, but... There's so many different rules that it follows to be a teen slasher, right? So after all that goes down, then he tells Paige, hey, um, do you have any boyfriends? And she's like, no. Then he asks Kate. Kate says, well, I know my boyfriend. We're kind of on and off and everything, and I know his family. And then he asks Dorothy. And Dorothy, you know, at this point, Dorothy's already with the guy, Campbell, the guy who's from her yoga class, right? And, you know, they basically corner her into the... They basically interrogate her into a corner where they're like, okay, well, how long have you known him? Oh, just a month. And then the girls are like, um, you let this guy move in with you after a month? She's like, well, you let guys inside your pants and you don't even know their last name. She's like, wow, you don't have to be a bitch about it, you know? And then they start, you know, harping her and say, okay, well, it doesn't matter if you've only been together a month. Do you know his last name? She didn't even know his fucking last name. <laughs> It was crazy. It was like, what? You know? And then you find out later on the reason why she was like that, you know? And so as they leave, he tells Paige to stay. And then that's when the cop, like, tries to make sexual advances towards her. And he's like, hey, what are we going to do about this sexual tension? You know? And he puts his hand on her thigh. And she's like, um, you can put your hand up your ass. And she walks out. You know? And he's trying to play coy with that, you know, about it. And he's basically like, well, hey, you get back to me on that, right? <laughs> and then um, as that scene's all kind of went down. You know, the detective, he went and interviewed Campbell and found out that he was kind of a scam artist, which is, you know, the big buildup of this, right? And then you find out that he interviewed um, Adam about everything. And while that's going on, then you see that the door opens into Kate's apartment. And then you, the camera falls through and then it shows her neighbor. 
And he's like trying on her panties and shit. It was weird. And then the killer, he's just sitting there, the, sh the killer in the sheriff mask, right? <clears throat> he's looking at him. And he's like, hey, brother, uh, it's not what you look like. It's not what it looks like, you know. I'm not well. And, you know, he's fucking pissed at this point because he's looking at him. And then he's got the nosebleed on his mask. And he has a fucking hot iron, you know, for ironing clothes. And uh, he basically knocks the shit out of him with it. He's down there and he's like all out of it. Then he fucking burns his face with the iron. And then he beats the shit out of him with it. What I thought was crazy is that they only showed it twice, you know, in this film, in the original cut. But if you see the new Blu-ray that recently came out, it shows he beats the shit out of him like 12 times. I was like, ooh, shit. Um, that was kind of similar in the book. The book didn't really say that they beat the shit out of him like 12 times like I said it. But it just said that he was hit repeatedly with this hot iron, right? And so after all that's done... Then you see Kate coming back, and then, you know, you see her boyfriend there, you know, Adam, and they're talking and everything. And then she basically said, okay, well, I got you a valentine, because he gave her something small for a valentine. She gave him an IOU, right? <clears throat> and he's like, okay, I guess I'll see you later. She goes to her apartment, and she sees that her iron is all nicely folded up, right? Then she's like, what the fuck? And then all of a sudden, she gets the iron, because she hears a noise, and it ends up being Paige. Um, I guess they were really close friends, that they would go to their houses and had keys to each other's place. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Um, then they start talking, and then that's when Dorothy called and was, you know, kind of being a bitch, because she was just like, well, they go and took my man Campbell, and, uh, they didn't question Adam, you go back and forth about how he's a drunk and how he's not a drunk, and, you know, they build all this dialogue to it, right? And then they said, okay, well, if you feel bad, take care of the guy, you know? Then they hang up, and then they thought that she called back, <clears throat> and then that's when the detective's like, hey, couldn't find anything on Jeremy, just be careful, though, um... If there's anything, you know, that you guys need, let me know. And then it builds up to how Dorothy's having this big-ass party, right? And it's the day of the party because it's Valentine's, right? And then it shows how she's talking to Campbell and everything. She apologized. She got him a nice, fancy-ass watch. And then, you know, then they go to the bedroom have a little bit of fun. But then they imply that he, uh, <laughs> that he couldn't hang, you know? They imply that he couldn't hang at all. <clears throat> and I thought it was funny with that, you know? Because of the fact of... You know, he's all telling her, well, I'm sorry, it's it's been a long time. She's like, don't worry, I'm just going to go in the shower. It shows she's in the shower, she gets done. You know, he gives her a gift of, like, this uh, Cupid necklace. <clears throat> and then she's like, you're going to come back for the party, right? He's like, yeah, 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 I'll come back. I just got some shit that I got to do. So it shows that he's, like, in this... You got to remember, this is a big-ass house. It's like a mansion. <clears throat> he's, like, in the pool area, and he's on the cell phone. And he's basically describing, you know all of her dad's information he's trying to wipe out his uh account and try to transfer it into his account and you know that's where he stumbles you know because they asked him okay well where were you born and he's like what and i guess san francisco they're like just transfer the fucking funds and then that's when dorothy called him on the intercom hey the pilot went out can you fix that and you know at this point his asshole colors are coming out and he's like yeah i got it god damn it now i'm on the part of the staff and it shows he goes down in the basement and he sees, like, the water heater and everything. If you don't know what a water heater is or how to light a pilot, that's some scary shit. <laughs> you know, you got to do it with a match and do it, like, fucking far away. Or otherwise, it just, you know, you look like Freddy Krueger, right? <clears throat> so he goes down there. All the light blows out and shit, right? So he's like, all right. He lights it. And then, as you see in the corner, you see the sheriff killer. He's right behind him, right? He lights the pilot and puts it all back in. He's like, all right, well, I guess that deserves a Porsche. <laughs> Then that's when the sheriff killer comes up, hits him with an axe, whoosh, you know, hits him in the back, and he's done for, right? Then it builds into, now here, the party kicks off, right? <laughs> the party's kicking off, and it shows that all these caterers and everything, they're all, you know, making the fancy food. Because you got to remember, Dorothy is well off, you know? She's paying for all of this shit, right? It shows that everyone's having fun, good time. Kate goes in there, she sees Paige. Paige tells her, yeah, I got a date with Brian. He should be coming up soon. They go and they see... Uh, Dorothy and Dorothy's just sitting there eating the plate of buffalo wings and Kate's trying to talk to her and then you know Dorothy's telling her well I'm not stupid I know when I'm getting dumped you know Adam comes in they start talking <clears throat> and then she's like well I guess everything's all perfect so she storms out you know kind of like the the spoiled child syndrome I guess you know and then it builds up to where the you see this one chick she sneaks into the party now this is the same chick that saw Campbell at the art show and she's, like, trying to call him out for being a con man, taking her money and shit. And then, you know, she starts to go and, and see Dorothy. And then that's when the two other girls, you know, Kate and Paige, they're like, what the hell are you doing here? They're all like, well, 
Um, I'm here to tell you that he stole my necklace and you're wearing it and he's he doesn't love you he loves your trust fund <laughs> you know she's trying to warn her and then they said nope they kicked her out and then that's when they start saying well ah this party sucks you know and then that's when Paige meets up with this dude named Brian Brian was one of the guys from the beginning of the film that they speed dated right he comes and he's like oh I like your wiggle I like the way you move I got a surprise for you let's go upstairs right and I thought this was funny because this was in the book too she goes upstairs and, uh, you know, they make out and everything. He pulls his pants down and uh, she looks at him and she starts laughing. She goes, you brought me up here so I could see your penis. And he's like, uh, aren't you going to wax it? <laughs> I mean, I thought it was kind of stupid, but that was in the book. That's what was in the book. Trust me, I read this fucking book twice this whole week, man. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, and then she's like, okay. So she plays along with it. She ties him up and everything, blindfolds him. And then he's trying to tell her, you know, hey, I always knew that you're kind of kinky and everything. And she's like, you still want me to wax you? And he's like, yeah. So she gets like one of the candles with hella wax and she pours it all over on him. Oh, man, fucking burn. And she walked out. And uh, afterwards, you know, her and Kate, they meet up. And then she's like, OK, well, I'm going to go in the hot tub because they have a hot tub in the, in the house. Right. So she goes into the hot tub and then Kate, she walks in on Adam. And you got to remember, he is a drunk. He's an alcoholic. And he was promising her that, hey, I don't drink, I don't do this. They went on a couple dates where they didn't drink and shit. And then she walks in on him drinking like, you know, five or six, you know, glasses of champagne. He's just chugging them. She's like, well, uh, I guess I have your answer at the end of that glass right there. He's like, no, it's nothing like that. It's nothing like that. <laughs> so uh, they're kind of bickering. Then it shows that, you know, Paige is going into the hot tub. She's by herself. It's kind of, you know, enclosed and shit, like in a patio. And she starts hearing noises. And then all of a sudden, she turns around. And she sees that there's a the bottle of champagne that she was drinking. There's a rose next to it. And so she, there's all these bushes and shit. She gets out of the tub. And she's like, okay, who wants to be my valentine? Get the fuck out of here. You know? Um, she was getting pissed because no one was owning up to it. <clears throat> she goes over there and looks in the bushes. Didn't see anything. She turns around. It's the shared killer. He fucking picks her up and throws her in the fucking hot tub. As he throws her in the hot tub, she hits her head and knocks out a little bit, right? Then I guess they had a glass cover. It's plastic, like acrylic. So he closes it, locks it. So there's like that much room of air. So she's like putting her head up and screaming, help, help, you know, trying to breathe. And then here he has this big ass drill. It's an impact drill. And it's, I know it's an impact drill because it's got that power to fucking tear through anything, you know? So he has a fucking long drill bit like this long. You know, trying to get at her, you know, trying to like torture her in a way, right? And so he stops for a second so she could breathe through on one of the little holes. And then that's when he, you know, makes another hole, gets her in the arm. And so she like gets, you know, it slices the shit out of her arm. So she's like, oh, and swimming around. And then that's when he's like, all right, fuck this opens it up and it's plugged into the wall as it's still going throws it in the water and she fucking electrocutes and shit i was like whoa okay this is a pretty cool death scene right here i like this one <laughs> and well when that was going on then all of a sudden all the lights for the party everything just everything died because you know she got shocked so everyone's like ah this party blows so everybody all leaves like super quick and everything and then that's when um her and dorothy kind of meet up and then Dorothy, you know, kind of had this attitude where she's like, oh, you've all always made fun of me because I was fat. Now that I finally get somebody good, you all want to take that away from me. Oh, you know, being stupid, right? <clears throat> and then when she leaves, it's just Kate by herself kind of looking all around. And then all of a sudden, you know, she sees Adam and he's kind of coming up to her and saying, baby, I need you to dance with me. And she's freaking out because this whole movie implies who's the killer, who's the killer, who's the killer, right? And so she starts talking to him and everything. And, uh, you know, she starts dancing. Then she kicks him in the nuts and shit. And then um, that's when she runs outside and the detective was supposed to be at the party. She goes and sees that uh, the detective's phone is going off. And then she goes and sees his head pops out of the fucking pond with the IOU that she gave her boyfriend, Adam. And then that's where she starts to develop this fear for him, right? She starts running all around. She goes downstairs to the house and she sees that the lady who accused Campbell of taking her shit... She came back in and she gets killed by the sheriff, you know, because he slams her face right through the fucking broken glass from a shower from the sauna. And, you know, then you find out that the sheriff, he killed the maid, Millie. That was her name. But what was crazy is that they didn't show that. You know, that wasn't in the featured cut. And so it shows this good back and forth where 
you know, Adam's trying to chase after her, trying to tell her, hey, I'm here for you, I'm here for you. You know, he's kind of playing like the obsessed best friend. And then all of a sudden, that's when the sheriff comes out and is just like, oh, right? And as, you know, they roll down the stairs, then all of a sudden, uh, I, I guess Kate, she had grabbed a gun and then she had dropped it as going down. And then Adam comes up right behind her and picks up the gun and shoots the sheriff because he wakes up. You know, boom, 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 right? And all of a sudden, she starts breaking down. She's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to kick you in the groins. I, I didn't know, I didn't know. And he's like, no, it's okay, it's okay. So he plays this off, like, okay, who's this sheriff? And then they pull the mask off, and it ends up being Dorothy, right? And it's like, the whole time, the movie makes you think it's Dorothy killing everybody, little by little, because she's crazy, right? <laughs> then it shows that he calls the cops, and then he's holding Kate, and she's like, I'll never leave you. And he's like, okay, you know? And as the movie ends, it shows there's blood dripping, like on her face, on the side, kind of like a tear. And then all of a sudden, it shows that he's, like, holding her, and then it shows his fucking nose is bleeding. It's like, whoa, that was a big fucking twist. Like, you didn't even expect that. <laughs> so the whole time, um, Adam wasn't Adam. Adam was Jeremy Melton. He just legally changed his name, and, you know, he built this whole plot revenge to come back to get after all these girls, and he found love and took care of the one that was nice to him. Whoa, right? <laughs> I mean, that just, that, that blows my mind. But it's a great revenge story. It really was. And the book, the book did the film justice because the book was exactly similar to the same as the movie. I mean, there's a little bit of difference, you know, here and there. It didn't get as violent as some of the movie scenes, you know. And if it did, it just said, oh, it repeatedly happened, you know. Um, it, that's how books are, you know. <laughs> but it's interesting to find out that this movie is such an underrated classic. You know, I mean, for the time, as I said, when it came out in 2001, there was a lot of shit going on in 2001. Obviously, you know, the big thing that happened that year. And then it just, like, it, it kind of fell off a little bit, you know? And everybody forgot about this film. Then you have, you know, some actors that came out and said that they regret doing this film and all that. And um, But it's just, it's a great film. I mean, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, it, it's a, your stereotypical teen slasher horror film. That's what it is, you know? But what I thought was cool about this film, they kept it, you know, as close as they can to the book, but they kind of threw in some features into there that kind of make it, like, modernized, right? So everything happened in 1988, right? Well, the story takes place 13 years later, and he builds up his revenge. So if they're in sixth grade and it's 13 years later, they were supposed to be around 23, 24 age range, you know? But, I mean, it, it just, they kept that true life into that aspect of it, you know? And what's kind of crazy about this film is that this film was shot super quick. They shot it in 42 days, and most of the actors, they were done within a week. You know, like Katherine Heigl, you know, for the few scenes she was in, she shot it in two days, she was done. You know, uh, David Baranis, he, um, he, you know, he played the main char character, you know, the killer. He shot his, I think, within a week, you know. Um, but it was a pretty interesting film, it really is, you know. And this film holds a one record, actually. <laughs> the record that this film holds is that it had a teaser trailer, and actually, I, sh I should scratch that. It's two records, right? One is that when they showed this film, like the trailer for the Super Bowl in 2001, it had the cheapest spot, you know? So it paid $10 million just to show the one advertisement. It's the cheapest out of all these films that, you know, you see in the Super Bowl, right? I thought it was pretty cool about that. And then two is that the narrator for all these, like, trailers and stuff like that, they're always a mill, right? This was one of the first films that had a female actually narrating the story, like, in the trailer. So I thought that was pretty cool, you know, because you didn't see too many films after that doing that trend. And now it's a trend where everybody's trying to get onto it and say, oh, I was the first. I was the first, you know. But it was pretty cool that Valentine's really was the first <laughs> to break that mold, you know. <clears throat> and as I said, they will never make a teen slasher film like this again because of the dialogue that was in it, how they were calling, you know, the big girl buffalo. They call, you know, the geeky kid a pervert. You know, you're not going to see that dialogue back in. no. I mean, everybody would get offended now these days, you know, and rightfully so, because I mean, that's, that's really harsh, you know, <laughs> um, and then the fact of, you know, modern technology, um, at the time wasn't super big, like how it is now, like you could check everything off your phone now, you know, back in the day, you know, you had the regular flip phones, you didn't even have the razor yet, you know, so that, that kind of changed up a little bit of the aspect of it, which is why you'll never see another teen slasher film like this, um, but, like I said, you know, it's it's a very unique film. It's one of those holiday horror films that people tend to forget about, you know. 
I did for a while when I first saw this. I saw this actually when I was in high school. I was one of the first ones to go see this in, in the theaters. You know, and when I saw it, I thought, oh, this is a badass film. But what was disappointing to me as a young teenage boy is the fact that, you know, in the book, <laughs> there was no cursing, but like one or two like fucks in there, you know. Um, and then not only that, this film showed no nudity. And, you know, to me, I thought, OK, it's a hype. Why the hell do they have it rated R if there's not that much cursing and there's no nudity? You know, apparently this film. For me, I would say this is a hard PG-13 film. It's not rated R, you know, because it doesn't really show too much gore or anything like that. But that's what they got hit with was with the gore and everything, which is why, you know, now in 2019, they re-released this film from Scream Factory and they decided, OK, we're going to put everything that wasn't in the original DVD and the VHS because the VHS has special features. You just had to watch the film, roll through the credits and then you see it at the end. Um, what I thought was interesting is that when I got the Blu-ray, and I watched it, it showed all the scenes in there that should have been in the film, you know? The part where he beats the shit out of the guy with iron, you know, for 12 times. Um, the fact that there was a different, like, angles of, like, the hot tub scene where he's, like, drilling the holes through, you know? And there, there was a lot more that would have made this film just pop, you know? <laughs> um, but for what it was, for being a holiday horror film, you know, with Valentine's and everything, it was really cool for what it was, you know? And I thought what was even interesting, too, is that, like, all the girls that said, like, the comments to Jeremy Milton when he was a kid, like, oh, in your dreams, you know, she gets killed when she's, like, kind of in a sleeping position. Then the other girl pays where she's like, uh, I'd rather be boiled alive, which basically happened, <laughs> you know? And then the other girl was like, eh! you know he fed her fucking you know chocolate with maggots <laughs> i thought it was pretty cool because that was a wink from the book into the movie and vice versa you know there was a lot of you know aspect but anyways guys thank you all for tuning in for episode 45 on valentine's and i'll catch y'all next time as always bow down to the, bow down to the